Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Do you have any advice on dialogue and how to how because you have some very realistic dialogue in your scripts? How do you how do you approach dialogue? I try to my one thing is never answer the question somebody asks, you know, it's like if, mm. if someone asks, is the sky blue, you don't say yes. You know, you, you would say the sky's blue, but not not like it was yesterday when the you know, when the storm was here or so, you know, it, it had just blown through or something that leads to something else. You're always every line of dialogue should kind of be telling you something about the person that is speaking it, you know, and the events and what's going on. You just want to you want to get that feeling and then you, because that's how people in real life, you know, they, they, they don't, you just, everything isn't just A, B, A, B, A, B back and forth. It's like things, things flow, you know, and you kind of get off tangent and you get back and you find your ways. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'll throw another name, um, mm -hmm. I'll name drop on you again. So I, I was doing the Star Trek with, um, with, uh, Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. And so he and I are working on that together. And, when we're talking about, and he's writing this dialogue scene that I've written, and then he writes it. And it's like, my God, because <laughs> I thought I was like, I didn't want to be straightforward with anything. So I'm kind of flowing over here. And then he does this thing, which is now five pages longer than my scene was. And he's going all out here and he's touching on stuff that's way over here. And then he comes back over and it was just beautiful. It was just so wonderful and so funny. And so it's like, he just, Again, you're talking about someone that sees stuff. Oh, like, well, you know, yeah. normal humans, you know, and so um, <laughs> right. it, it's, uh, and I say that with, you know, reverence. It's um, but it, it he's just that guy. And so he's really good at not just being straightforward with anything. Oh. I think that, you know, so, yeah, clearly. And it um, so that that's to me is it you just kind of you you want to take your time. Don't rush. Don't rush to feed information. Don't just deliver information through exposition and everything you you just want to you want to have conversations and then let the stuff come out in conversations this i did this thing we're, we're just selling it's a it's a uh tv show with benedict cumberbatch and i've i've got these two strangers that kind of meet uh, in europe and they're each asking questions about each other and just having a conversation but neither one ever gives a straight answer so you by the end of it you kind of know where they're coming from, but you don't really know any details about either one. They're still mystery, you know, mysteries to mm -hmm. each other. And that's, I think is, is important. You, you don't want to, you just don't want to know who everyone is, you know, in the first five, 10 minutes, because then it's like, okay, I'm just going to follow this guy. Then it, then it all comes down to, and I build everything from character anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you do that, if you feed everybody, if you've given everybody, the audience, what they need to know in the first 10 minutes of a character, then it's like, you're now you're relying on explosions or actions mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, it's just, you're not really getting into the twists and turns of character. And that to me is like, that's the fun. So that was, what I was going to ask you, cause I always ask screenwriters, do they, <clears throat> do they start with plot or character? And I know that you obviously need both, but yeah. some, some writers focus on the plot much more than the character. But I always say is, my personal experience, and, I, and I've talked to a lot of writers about this, is like when you think of a movie that you've loved, rarely do you remember, it's like, man, that plot was amazing. I mean, yeah. you could say that to Sixth Sense, like Sixth Sense was such a strong plot that right. that, that that's what you remember from yeah, it. But, there but are that, outliers like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, but generally, like Indiana Jones, like I kind of I, I kind of remember Raiders of the Lost Ark. I vaguely remember Temple of Doom because it's not one of my favorites, but then I, I vaguely remember Last crusade like i get the general plot but what i remember is indy and his father in last crusade like that's what that's what you connect it, to um that's or it. or it's short round at moments right yeah, short round. it's moments and and moments come from character you know and unless you're in a michael bay film you know where it's like <laughs> then it's like something else but it is it's so um you, you need characters everything and like i said I, I always start off with the beginning middle end just two lines. So I know kind of where I'm headed. And then when I, my character, I start building the character. Normally that middle will change. You know, what's going to, what I thought was going to happen at the middle no longer happens because this character decided to do something else. And so the ending is usually, I'm going to get to the same ending at some point, you know, it, that, that doesn't vary as much, 
but it's all about it's all about the character and where they're taking you, you know. And the it's it's a reason why I'm not I can't really pitch because I can't I can't write. I don't know what I'm going to write, you know. I don't know where this character is going to be. I can't tell you like in a TV show. I can't tell you what he's going to be doing in episode five yet. You know, I've got to get him through the pilot. And and um, there was one time when I was first starting out. The only time I ever pitched, it was a job I really wanted, and I had a week to get ready. And so I sat down and I wrote the script and I just plowed out the script, um, 111 pages or something, whatever it was. And then I wrote a pitch from the script that I'd written and that's what I pitched. And so that's the only way I can do it. I have to actually write it. And so, um, well, you said something really interesting and I've heard this said so many times and I've read it in so many books is that a lot of times writers, um, like Stephen King and, and some, you know, prolific writers, they'll say this, this comment where like, oh, the, the character took me somewhere or the character decided to do something. And I know a lot of writers listening. I mean, I, I get where that, that statement comes from because as a writer, I see kind of where certain things kind of start flowing. But I want to hear your opinion on like, what does that actually mean? Because for some, for some people who are starting to write, let's say they start off with Indiana Jones, like, well, where does Indiana Jones go? How is Indiana Jones talking to me? Like, I think Quentin says it. He's like, oh, I just let the, I, I'm just a dict, uh, what is it, a dictator? Not a dictator, um, uh, oh, the court a reporter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 a court reporter between two, I'm like, that sounds great, Quentin, but for the rest of us mortals, how does that work? Like, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Mr. Mr. Blonde and Mr. Black are talking. That's fantastic, you know, but like, how like I, I just want to know from your point of view, it being inside of that space in your own writing, how does that work? It is it's so weird. It's um it's like he said, it's these guys are talking and I'm hearing them and I'm saying it. Like my wife will say, I heard you, I heard these lines, you know, the dialogue, she's walking past and it's like because I don't even realize I'm saying them out loud, you know, and it's I'm just doing it and it's you you they just they do, they speak to you and they they change. It's like I I just this one thing that I just sold it in the, in the first 10 minutes, this guy and this man and woman, they meet and you think they're going to be this great. It's this love stories can be wonderful. And then boom, there's just this like tragic death and it's kind of been a thriller action thing. And by it's a, it's a TV show. So near the end of the pilot, she, she dies. And that's the way it was all planned. That's the way it was all written. I liked her character so much and they were so good together that it was like, okay, we're not going to kill her now. You know, we're going to change this because she she just did things that became so important and she became sh- such a part of the story that we never intended. I never intended that now she is kind of the second lead in the show. So she's going to, you know, it, it's all going to work out. So th- that's, I guess, is again, the thing that I say, I don't like to outline. Don't I don't want to get too locked in. I, I would always recommend that to right, be flexible, you know, just because this is the way you thought you were going to do it when you started don't don't lock yourself into that because there's so many moves that can be made and and if you find if as you're writing and you find something that wow this feels like it's really working and I really like it that means it's really working and it's probably good you know so keep going keep that person if that dynamic you need those two people to really make it work then don't get rid of the one person and so um so there's there's all that stuff and and characters again they just they evolve and they write i mean the way i write is i i'll write as many pages as I can in a day. And then when, before I start the next day, I go back and I read all the pages that I wrote the day before. And then I kind of change and I tweak and I do all that stuff in those, those first pages. And I keep going that way. So I'm always rewriting. And uh, like, if I get stuck on page 40, I'll go back to page one and read all the way through and start making changes. And I just keep doing it. So that's kind of, so, so in your writing process on a daily basis, you, let's say you write 20 pages, the next day you'll, you'll come and read those 20 pages. And it's almost kind of like, a um, a runway to get you going yeah. to the next to, to like exactly. launch it as opposed to just starting cold picking yeah, up where exactly. you left. Exactly. I'm I'm already now okay, I'm with them. I'm with the journey now. It's like I'm I'm going. I've got momentum. And so it's like I just keep going and and it's a quick read, you know, because you know what's going to happen and stuff. You're just kind of seeing if everything is flowing and if you bump on anything and then if not, you just like you said, it's a runway. You just take off. And when I'm writing, you know, when I was writing my my nonfiction and fiction books, I do the exact same thing. Sometimes I'll get caught and I'm like, ah, where do I where do I go from that? Let me just reread this chapter. Yeah. 
and you yeah. just start back and it just all of a sudden, oh, there it is. And it just, it's kind of like you're picking yeah. up a, a signal, a radio signal almost, like you're yeah, that you channeling. Kind of left something, <laughs> yeah, and a little beacon back there, you know, that you get, okay, then I got that, now I can go. But it is true, there are those little things that, that you put in those first sections that you knew were gonna take you to the next ones. You just sometimes have to remind yourself, you know, and just see them again. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv.